All right, guys. OCD for EDC here. And tonight, for your face balls, I have another Tucson knife. This here is the Tucson 165, and it is designed by Wong Designs. So, <clears throat> this is not a small knife, and uh, if we are measuring this guy in metric, this thing is close to 22 centimeters long, so this knife can buy beer all day long. Anyway, we'll get into uh, a few size comparisons here. We've got the uh, Spyderco uh, Manix 2 and the Spyderco Pair 3 Lightweight. And we'll throw out another big knife here, the uh, Cold Steel 8015. And... Well, what the hell? We'll throw out to the uh, Benchmade Bug Out. So you can see here what kind of size we're talking about. Um, so, I think that gives a pretty good size representation. So what we're looking at here, guys, is a overall length of 8 and 5 eighths inches. We got a blade length of 3 and 3 quarter. A handle length of 4 and 7 eighths. An effective grip area of just shy of four and a quarter, uh, about four and three sixteenths. We got a handle thickness of right around five eighths of an inch or six tenths, and we have a blade thickness of 145 thousandths. Uh, this is extremely well ground. You can see here we we do have a flat saber grind, um, but we've got a really beautiful edge here. And this thing is 16 thousandths behind the edge all the way across. Just really, really well done. You've got a uh, really nice swedge up at the top here and a fuller that runs about half the, the length of the blade. So it is a titanium frame lock. And as you can see, there are some uh, kind of large finger choils, if you will, or finger contouring, which generally I don't really care for. Um, generally my hands are big enough that none of these knives that have these types of features on them fit my hands. Uh, this one is definitely an exception to that rule. So <clears throat> anyway, we'll work our way around this guy. So it's a simple two, two screw construction. You do have a blade stop pin up here at the top and you have a lanyard hole back here with uh, a milled out backspacer and a pin, uh, pin through there and you can see that it's a, a short backspacer that runs around right to there. As you can see blade centering is perfect. We do have a milled titanium pocket clip. It does have adequate ramp. It does have good tension um, and uh, it is uh, recessed back here at the back of the scale which I'll show you when I disassemble this guy. We do have a hardened steel uh, lock bar insert, and it does have an over travel stop, uh, and it is does have a ceramic uh, detent ball as well as uh, ceramic bearings. So, you know, pretty simple, straightforward construction. Uh, this thing is also got 12C27 blade steel, and. A really nice blade shape it's a pretty standard blade shape I would say you know a standard uh, drop point you've really got some some nice flat here and a pretty good belly and it comes down to a really pretty aggressively ground tip I wouldn't say it's too fragile but uh, yeah it's it's done really well a really usable blade shape so it is all satin finish and so it does fingerprint like crazy but uh, you know otherwise it's a just a beautiful beautiful knife so one of the things that I want to start this out by saying is that I paid $60 for this knife shipped to my door now <clears throat> for a titanium frame lock flipper I really don't care what blade steel it's in but 12c27 happens to be a really great EDC blade steel uh, and I have 
various other Tucson knives that are also in 12C27 that I have used extensively, like this one here, the 127. This is also a long design, 12C27 blade steel. It's held up extremely well. I've been super happy with the performance. And for $60, yeah, you're just you're just not touching anything close to this kind of quality for 60 bucks. I mean, and I'll and I'll show you here as well, before I pull this thing down, we better get a weight on this guy. So we're looking at, you know, a, a blade length here of three and three quarter inches, overall eight and five eighths, and a weight of just right at four and a half ounces. So just amazing weight for a full, uh, full titanium frame lock flipper. Uh, of that size is pretty unbelievable. So let's pull this guy down here and true to form hardware. I don't want to lose that O ring there. Hardware is all uh, T8 Torx, um, all the body screws and the pivot on every Tucson that I've ever had has all been T8 and it's all really nicely machined hardware that's totally deep enough uh, just really really well done really really nice hardware so pocket clip like I said machined titanium it does have nice uh, entry and exit ramp there and come on all right and so here we're looking at the scale. I'm actually going to hold that off to the side for a moment. And we got our back spacer. And then the uh, lanyard pin. And here we're looking at we have a detent ramp and ceramic bearings with a nylon insert. And, uh, you know, nicely done detent ball. And man, there's so many knives that could benefit from a, a detent ball ramp and Tucson killing it. Check out the internal milling. Just unbelievably well done. This is absolutely someone who gave a shit about this knife. This is the most in extensively internally milled knife that I think I've ever seen, especially on the lock bar side. Uh, generally, you just don't see, uh, you know, any internal milling actually on the lock bar itself. Um, but just unbelievably well done. Tucson always does these uh, washers here that have the groove cut in them for the bearings to ride. Uh, just makes them ultra smooth. You can see there the over, tra over travel stop, detent ball. Just really unbelievable. And again, guys, $60 is what I paid for this thing shipped to my door. So that's what we're looking at. Tucson TS-165. And if you guys can tell me that there is a better value deal out there, um... I'd have to see it to believe it. Uh, I'm just really blown away with the quality of the uh, what Tucson is putting out these days. You know, they have original designs, good designs, and they're ergonomic, well done. And this one here has a couple of shortcomings, and we'll get into that in just a second here. <clears throat> I'm going to throw that back together real quick. And I'll show you how well this machining's done. I don't think I'm forgetting anything here. Um, so I bet you, once I put this thing back together here, that it will be perfectly centered. And yeah, like I said, the machining's just really, really well done. And before filming this, I actually uh, 
went online and looked up some different Chinese manufacturers just to get an idea of what was out there. <clears throat> and like for we or we knives, for example, they don't even make a titanium frame lock knife in any steel that you can buy for under 178 bucks. That was the cheapest one that I could find. And now I'm not saying that we makes a bad product. I have several we knives, um, that make nice stuff. And it's, uh, you know, I'm just saying for $60, this thing is unbelievable. So anyway, you can see there blade centering is right on. We have zero blade play. Feels like, yeah, I've got the pivot just a little bit tight here. Oop, now I got a little blade play. Just like that. Action is fantastic. Quality is unbelievable. So, <clears throat> the few things that I don't like about this knife. The biggest problem for me about this knife is they put the freaking clip right over top of the lock bar relief cut. Now, I really wish that they would have put that lock bar, made it internal instead of an external it would have been so much nicer going in and out of the pocket. Um, my pocket always gets hung up on this this edge right here as you're trying to go into your pocket. So that's kind of a bummer. I wish that uh, they would have done that differently. So Mr. Wong, if you're watching, put that internally instead of external and the thing will pocket way, way, way nicer. So the depth of the pocket clip doesn't really bother me too much. You know, it's relatively deep carry for a tight pocket clip, and that part's fine. <clears throat> I'm not a lanyard guy, so I could certainly do without the lanyard, but it was well done here, and, uh, you know, it's not a hole sticking through the back end of the knife, and it didn't obstruct where they put the pocket clip, which is nice. The design of the knife, although it, when I first saw it, I was really thinking this top side here was probably going to be uncomfortable in the hand. But it really isn't. Um, you have multiple locations here for your thumb, and all of it is chamfered extremely well. And even to get way out here on the end, if I was really bearing down on this thing, uh, you can do that. And with all the two sun knives, I mean, every single edge is just really well chamfered on the inside as well as you know of course everything on the outside even around the lock bar cut out where most are sharp you can see that little beveled edge there and they just do a fantastic job with that these knives there's just not a not a sharp place on them you can see even on the the edges of the blade tang everything is all chamfered you can see that little edge there just really really well done the one little gripe with the lock bar relief cut. Other than that, this thing, man, it's uh, it's about as close to EDC perfection as I've come across. If if that was changed, this thing would be a home run. Uh, the 12C27, I'm totally fine with. That's a good working blade steel. Um, you know, yeah, it's not M390 or 20CV or or L Max, but uh, for sixty dollars, I'll take twelve C twenty seven all day long. And for a titanium frame lock, this thing is just extremely well done. You know, the blade's deep enough; you can't cut yourself back here. No, uh, no risk of getting hit by the the tip of the blade here. You know, some of the cardinal sins that you see from some other manufacturers once in a while. They just really nailed this one. And <clears throat> Wong Din Jin, the designer here, has uh, 
has really done a fantastic job with the TS-165. Trying to wipe some fingerprints off here. The TS-127. And... Oh, yeah. I also have another Wong knife. This one's actually in D2 steel. The TS-80. And... Uh, I don't know how big Mr. Wong's hands are, but generally speaking, knives are, are a little small for my hands and, uh, you know, stuff like the bug out. And I mean, yeah, of course, you know, I can use it, but it's cramped and, you know, I like it. It's fine. It's a nice lightweight guy, you know, and because of the forward choil on the pair of three, you know, I mean, yeah, it does work, but. I'd much rather hold on to this. This thing fits my hand extremely well. And along with the, the 80 and with the TS-165. So <clears throat> this thing here is, is uh, uh, about uh, 850 thousandths or so. Um, so you're about seven eighths inside these these finger toil areas and then at the highest points it's right at about an inch same with the blade and because it's just slightly thicker than average I would say you know half inches of probably average thickness this guy here is is like about five eighths thick it really really feels fantastic in the hand so if you have larger hands like I do TS 165 just a phenomenal knife <clears throat> i guess my only other gripe about tucson has nothing to do with this knife but just tucson in general is the way you have to buy them um ebay is really the only place you can find them i, I think you can also get them on like aliexpress or something like that i don't i don't know about that i've never dealt with any of that uh there's, you know, eBay's not horrible. Um, and like I said, $60 shipped to your door. Uh, took like, I don't know, eight, eight to 10 days to get it. So nothing terrible. You know, a lot of people think it takes six weeks or whatever, and, and it didn't. Um, but uh, yeah, just, man, for $60, it is absolutely amazing what these guys are doing. And, you know, if this thing was made by Wii, or Best Tech, or Kaiser, or, you know, any, Riot, and, and I mean, that's the kind of quality we're talking about here, the, the, yeah, I would, I would put this thing up against the Wii knives that I have for quality any day of the week, and those knives are three, four times the money, and, uh, yeah, I just, uh, when you figure in what you're paying for these guys, I, I just can't say enough about them. So anyway, you guys have a great night and uh, we will talk to you soon.